Hi dogs by nature, welcome back to this short and sweet edition of the film room. Uh, I just want to break down one play from the Pittsburgh Steelers game. I don't want to sound too negative about it because uh, you know any win over the Steelers is a great thing. But uh, this is a play where we left some yards on the field here. This play is going to result in a sack of Brandon Whedon. Uh, and, I, and I think we really missed a chance at a big play uh, for the Browns. I really do. Um, if we look at it, it, this is a play that we really need to be ready for. Okay, I'm going to roll this forward. We can see the blitz happen. This is just called an NCAA blitz. Okay, we're going to see the line stunt to our left here. And they're going to bring two linebackers off the edge here. Now, in the NCAA blitz, sometimes 92 will come inside, 94 will come outside. Those sort of two backers will sort of loop around one another. In this case, they don't. But you can just see the line stunts to the left, linebackers loop to the right. They rush five, get immediate pressure, and bring down Wheaton. Uh, now, what do we need to do to avoid this? Uh, my opinion, it's a very complicated uh, answer to a pretty simple question, right? We just need to avoid the sack, hit the open receiver. Shouldn't be too hard. Uh, there's a variety of different ways we can do this, and I think it starts with properly executing our protection. Uh, so you'll notice off the snap that uh, Mitchell Schwartz out here is becoming a really heady player for the Browns. Uh, I think ideally, is just as we wind this forward, you know, you think about if we knew what the Steelers were bringing on this play, if you knew who was, who was blitzing, we could just have Schwartz block 97, Laval get 98, Mack get 99, Greco get 94, and Thomas gets 92. We got each of our linemen is blocking a guy, and we got all five of them blocked, right? Uh, the problem is you don't know who's coming from where, obviously, but Schwartz has a good idea out here. He knows that we have four, one, two, three, four blockers to this side of center and that the Steelers really only have three people that are in position to rush. Okay, so even if the Steelers bring all three of these, we can still bump Laval over to get the nose and pick all three of these guys up because we got three blockers here. Okay, so you'll see at, at the snap, Schwartz steps inside Look him step inside, cut off that uh, B gap there, okay, and pick this up. By doing that, he's trying to bump Laval down to 98 so that Matt can bump over to 99 in case the Steelers come with the blitz on the other side. That's very smart by Schwartz. I think it demonstrates a lot of growth from him. Um, but we don't even need that sort of ideal of a world to happen for us to be able to pick this up. Why? Because we also have Trent Richardson, and he is going to flow to our right off of the snap. You'll notice he sort of gets a sort of a play-action fake. It's not a real hard fake. Uh, but he's coming over here, and right now we have one, two, and three blockers. And we can block up one, two, three guys blitzing on this side of the line. In my opinion, Greco should stay at home inside, get 99, and let 94 go because Trent can pick him up after he's on that play fake. Okay, rules for linemen, you block inside out, right? You make the you make the defense sort of loop around and take a longer path to the quarterback. Hopefully we can get rid of the ball in time. Another thing we can notice from this end zone angle is that I believe Wheaton could have checked to a run here. Okay. Talked a little bit about it. We have four guys on this side of center. Steelers only have three. Well, that's a great time to run the ball. We could double team these line, the linemen. We could double team the outside linebacker here, leak one of those four guys up to get 50, and we got Trent blocked up to the free safety. So if we check to a run to the right here, we have already outflanked the Steelers, right? We've put extra blockers to this side of the formation. They haven't matched with any other players, any safety support or anything like that. We should have running lanes there, okay? So that's the second thing I think we can do as we grow more as an offense and Whedon gets a better command of it. Uh, now the third thing that we could do here to avoid this sort of play is going to require the All-22. Now we can notice, uh, breaking the huddle, coming out of the huddle, Harrison is acting like he's over the slot receiver here. Okay. Uh, now as we get closer to the snap, we're going to notice Harrison 
is sneaking inside because he wants a blitz. Okay, it's pretty clear he's not covering Benjamin out here in the slot. Uh, I think at times it has been a problem where we don't get in the, the play in early enough to be able to check anything at the line. But in this instance, we didn't have a full six seconds at the line uh, left on the play clock when we snapped the ball. Okay, so Whedon can pull out from under center at this point. Hey, check 92, he's coming. You know, shift the protection, get it going that way. Check to a run on the right because the Steelers haven't matched our formation. He's got six seconds to, to change the play. Uh, the last thing that we could do in terms of a check or, or a sight adjustment, something from Whedon, uh, is throw something quicker to our receivers. So as I roll this forward, you're going to see the, the concept develop. We're trying to get Gordon here on a, on a dig route, a deep dig route, and he is wide open. Okay, we're running Benjamin just right up the seam, and Gordon's going to run sort of a square in behind him. He has got the ball and a lot of grass in front of him, okay? And he's one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback. Um, that's great. If we can block this up, we can get the ball to Gordon. Another thing we can do is check for Benjamin right about here. As soon as Whedon whips his head around, sees the pressure in his face coming up the middle. If, if uh, Benjamin, all he has to do here, he doesn't really have to change his route. He just has to look over his inside shoulder. If he looks over his inside shoulder, Whedon can get the ball to him on sort of a seam or a slant or something like that. Uh, you know, he, he should see this uh, linebacker coming in on the blitz and sort of turn immediately inside. We could hit him on a hot route. Okay? So, you know, how can we avoid this play in the future? Number one, execute the protection we have called better than we did. Uh, number two, we could check either to a run. We could check the protection as something different to sort of slide people over to help pick up the blitz that's coming. Or we could use a check or a sight adjustment to the receivers to use all the space that they're in and run a little bit quicker of a route instead of sort of a, look at how long that takes for Gordon to get down there and run this dig route. It's a great route. He's open. But you know it's going to take him some time to work down the field and make that break. Okay? Well, if we notice off the snap, look at this. We have from half field to the sideline and about 10 to 15 yards for these receivers to work in. There are no defenders in this whole area of the field. All we got to do is get them any route in that area. They got the ball in space. They're one-on-one. -on -one, they break a tackle. They're going to the house. And I think that illustrates sort of the, the counterpart to Dick LeBeau's uh, zone blitz scheme. right? What Dick LeBeau is trying to do is create an overload on this half of the line, this half of the protection, with his blitzing players, right? He's going to put Worlds over here, 93, up close to the line of scrimmage, make sure that we have to know that we have to be ready to block him if he comes on a blitz, show that he's going to blitz, and then Worlds is going to drop out into coverage, okay? And we waste the blocker because of that. And then the Steelers get a free man on the other side because of that. Okay, the counterpart to this is when they commit that extra person to blitzing the quarterback, we have that extra person in coverage. These two wideouts have no one, they're one on one, and Trent either can block the third guy here, even out the numbers in the rushing game, in sort of the blitzing game, or he can leak out into the flat, and we can have a one on zero. Okay, so for every sort of action that Dick LeBeau is going to take, we have the ability to burn him. And, and if we want to continue to beat the Steelers on a consistent basis, be competitive in these games, and start you know, splitting or winning the division with them, we're going to have to execute better against Dick LeBeau's zone blitz system and start taking advantage of some of the, the areas in coverage that he's going to leave open by sending extra players at the quarterback. So thanks for tuning in to Rufio's Film Room.